In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the trigonometric identities to find the non-permissible values, how to verify trig functions, and then also how to simplify trig functions as well. Now, so to begin, a trigonometric identity um, is a trigonometric equation that is true for all permissible values of the variable and expression on both sides of the equation. So what that means is no matter what value I put in, the permissible values, not the non-permissible values, then both sides of the equation will be true and they will be equal. So here are some trig identities that we've already identified. So we know that cosecant x is 1 over sine x, secant x is 1 over cos x, cotangent x is 1 over tangent x, and then here are some ones that might be a little bit new, but we've kind of touched on them before. So we have the quotient identities. So tan x is equal to sine x divided by cos x. And then since cotangent x is the reciprocal of tan x, then I can actually flip cos x over sine x, so that's, since that will also be the reciprocal. We have three Pythagorean identities. So sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. Cotangent squared x plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared x. And then the third one is 1 plus tan squared x is equal to secant squared x. Now, to show you the first Pythagorean identity, I'll recall the unit circle with point P on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. So let's place... And then we're here, we'll call it P. Here is our theta. Um, so then the theta, what are the coordinates of theta or the P? So I'm gonna place a dotted line here to create a right triangle. We'll call this side X, this side Y, and we're gonna place this on a unit circle, one. So I know that cos theta is equal to X divided by one, which means that cos theta equals X. I also know that sine theta equals y divided by 1. So sine theta is equal to y. So since we know that x is equal to cos theta and y equals to sine theta, then the coordinates of point P must be cos theta and sine theta. So we can also use Pythagoras to show the relationship between the three sides of the triangle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And then by substituting cos theta in for x and sine theta in for y, we have our Pythagorean identity. We just have to switch our sine squared and cos squared. Now we usually write the squares um, before um, or in between the cos and the theta uh, just to make it a little bit more concise and so we don't have to put any brackets in here. Now, to find the other two Pythagorean identities, uh, we'll do that as an exercise in class. All right, let's take a look at non-permissible values. So to determine the non-permissible values, uh, we're going to assess each trig function in the equation individually, and then we're going to examine the expressions uh, that we might have a non-permissible values. So where do we check? Well, we're going to take a look at the denominators and see where the denominators are going to equal zero. However, we also need to check the numerator because sometimes the numerators might have values where they are undefined. Now to help you understand and help you to find the non-permissive values, I recommend that you visualize the graph um, so that you can see where the denominators are equal to zero. So let's take a look at an example. So we have here cosecant theta equals cotangent theta divided by cos theta. So we also know that cosecant theta, let me just rewrite this identity first. So cosecant theta is equal to 1 divided by sine theta. And then we have cotangent theta, which right now, you know what, I'm going to leave this as cotangent theta for now, divided by cos theta. All right, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is our sine theta. So sine theta cannot equal zero. So where does that occur? So if I take a look at the sine graph for one period, these are the three points. 
And we know those three points are zero. And we want degrees, so zero, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, and so on. So generally, we would say that it, since it occurs every 180 degrees, we see that theta cannot equal 180 degrees times n. So every 180 degrees, we have a non-permissible value. Now let's take a look at um, cotangent theta. So cotangent theta, we can have a choice of it being 1 over tan theta. Or we can also have cos theta divided by sine theta. So here we have tan theta can't equal 0, or sine theta can't equal 0. However, since tan theta is equal to sine over cos, wherever sine theta equals 0, tan theta will also equal 0. And since we've already found out where that those points are, this is going to be the same as our first part here. All right, lastly, we need to take a look at the denominator. So we've done sine. We took a look at cotangent. Our last is to look at cos theta, which is the denominator of the second fraction. So cos theta can't equal 0. So thinking back to what the cosine graph looks like, it's equal to 0 here and here. And those two points are 90 degrees and 270 degrees, and so on and so on. So since cosine is periodic, we know that theta can't equal 90 degrees plus 180 degrees times n, where n is an integer. So we start at 90, and every 180 degrees, we will have a non-permissible value. All right, so the next thing is to verify um, a potential numer um, identity numerically. And we're actually not going to take a look at it graphically, so we're going to cross that off. So when the expressions on either side of the equal sign are evaluated for any permissible value, uh, we should have the values to be equal. Now, to verify means that we're actually going to plug in an angle to check um, that both sides are the same. So this first one here, we're going to use the same um, equal uh, equation that we had above, and we're going to plug in uh, 45 degrees into both sides. So you have cosecant 45 degrees equals to cotangent 45 degrees divided by cos 45 degrees. So using our special triangles, this is 45 degrees, so we're going to use the triangle 1, 1, root 2. Cosecant 45 degrees is going to equal the hypotenuse divided by the opposite, so this will be root 2 divided by 1. Cotangent 45 degrees is just going to be 1 over 1, so that will be 1. Cos 45 degrees will be 1 divided by root 2. So let's simplify. So this is a big division line here. I can think of this as 1 divided by, which represents, so the division symbol represents this big division line. 1 over root 2. So root 2 is equal to 1 times root 2 over 1. And so both sides is equal to root 2. So that's great. Let's show you how to do this with radians. So we have cosecant pi over 6, cotangent pi over 6, all divided by cos pi over 6. So this time we need the special triangle, which uses pi over 6. So this will be pi over 6. This is going to be 2. This side here will be root 3. And then the vertical, the y side, will be 1. So cosecant, remember, is hypotenuse divided by opposite, so this will be root 2, oh sorry, 2 divided by 1. Cotangent is going to be root 3 divided by 1, since it's the adjacent divided by opposite. And then cos pi over 6 is root 3 divided by 2. So again, let's write this out horizontally. So we're going to use the division sign to represent this line here. So then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. 
So the root threes cancel, so two equals two. All right, so we've verified, but we haven't proved or shown any expression generally. So we're gonna do that next. So here, what I want to do is determine the non-permissive values in radians of the following expression, and then we're going to simplify the expression. Now, actually, let's rewrite this using our identities first. So tan theta is the same as sine theta divided by cos theta. And cosecant theta is 1 divided by sine theta. So when we're looking for our non-permissible values, it's actually more convenient to write um, our trig identities, our trig functions, or our trig equations in uh, using sine and cosine so that we can actually find the non-permissible values using the sine and cosine graph. So here we again get cos theta can't equal 0 and sine theta can't equal 0 in the denominator. So here we have theta can't equal, so same as above, pi over 2, and then every um, 2 and pi, we will get pi over 2, or something that's coterminal. We also know that cosine graph hits 0 at 3 pi over 2, and then plus 2 n pi, which again, every 2 pi, it will hit an angle that is coterminal with 3 pi over 2. Uh, for sine theta, so theta can't equal 0 and pi, oops, and so on. So we say that 0 plus 2n pi. Theta also can't equal pi plus 2n pi. However, when you take a look, because 0 plus 2n pi already encompasses every pi, we can actually combine these together to say that theta can't equal n pi, where n is an integer. Same here, n is an integer. So to simplify this expression, we can cross off the sign, and then we're going to have 1 divided by cos theta, and then finally 1 divided by cos theta is actually secant theta. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Okay. So here we have 1 plus sine theta. So since it's already sine theta, we're going to leave it. But in the denominator, I'm going to change my cosecant to be 1 over sine theta. Now, whenever you see a fraction within a fraction, I recommend that you join this fraction here so that it is joined together with whatever the other expression is. In this case, it's 1. So we're going to get a common denominator. Think of this as 1 over 1. And we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by sine theta so that we can join the two together. So now we have sine theta plus 1 all divided by sine theta. And let's make this big division line again as a symbol. So we have 1 plus sine theta in our numerator divided by sine theta plus 1 over sine theta multiply by the reciprocal and you'll notice that the 1 plus sine theta here will cross off with the sine theta plus 1 in the denominator so we are left with a very nice expression of just sine theta okay let's go find our non-permissible value so we can see our denominator here is 1 plus cosecant theta and that can't equal 0. So cosecant theta can't equal negative 1. And remember that cosecant is a reciprocal of sine theta. So the reciprocal sine theta is going to be negative 1, still over 1. Okay. So we can actually erase this, and this will still be negative 1. So thinking back to what the sine graph looks like, that occurs right here at 3 pi over 2. So theta cannot equal 3 pi over 2, and then every 2n pi, where n is an integer. And then we also have sine theta can't equal 0 from the denominator here. So theta cannot equal n pi, where n is an integer. And that is something that we know from previous questions that we did earlier.